a very famous game show, Wheel of Fortune. But where did this expression come from? It, they didn't invent it. It's actually a continuation of ancient themes. And, well, Fortuna. So this is, a, a, especially amongst the Romans, the goddess Fortuna. And we see the Wheel of Fortune, for, Fortuna's Wheel. Uh, this is another, it's often you'll see Fortuna depicted like this. And especially the cornucopia, uh, the horn, horn of plenty, is uh, one of the themes. So about you know, you know, good fortune, plenty. You know, you're not having famine. You're not having these you know types of issues like disease usually goes with famine. Uh, but also up through to the um, Middle Ages again, we see Fortuna's wheel, the the wheel of fortune. Uh, another this is our Fortuna Prosper. So again, prosperity the horn of plenty or the cornucopia and again sort of connected with good fortune good planning but there's also uh if you do a little bit of reading into it you'll see but also it's not just about good luck but fortune also comes through uh hard work and discipline and through knowledge and for instance he's again we see fortune as wheel and the butterfly uh these ancient connections uh, especially roman but the interesting one here is the the square and also the plum. So we have the, the plum and the square. These are even carried through to well, ancient Egyptians. Uh, depictions, uh, their architects, their engineers carved this into so many temples. Uh, the, even when they uh, set up the temples, they would, they would set up the axis. I've shown those in other videos. But again, these Roman engineers, this goes back to Greeks, Persians, back to uh, the ancient Egyptians. And, uh, okay, anyway, so there's my computer freezing. All right, uh, but it carries through even like still through to uh, tarot, so the wheel, uh, wheel of fortune, another uh, depiction of uh, fortune as wheel, wheel of fortune. But you'll find it in many places. So, for instance, this is on 99 Macquarie Street here in Sydney, and we see the caduceus, the symbol of Hermes. A measuring rod and it's also a symbol of uh, connections of peace but in so many other places this is just Sydney but uh, many other cities I've covered the connection between the Hermetic and the Wheel of Fortune and so again that's this is the same building but now we just see the wheels as well and there on the front Hermes or Mercury the god of weights and measures the equivalent of both it's bird hybrid and Fortuna's wheel. And again, there's another uh, picture of the same thing. So this, uh, the wheel of fortune. Yeah, again, uh, part of an uh, of an, an ancient legacy as well, and the philosophy and uh, the esoteric themes that are uh, connected with it as well. So uh, cornucopia, prosper, fortuna, and these. Again, symbols that carried through. So this was uh, uh, from the uh, medieval, maybe Middle Ages, around that that period. But we see uh, how often, especially in this uh, in Europe, this was the time, you know, of the of witch trials and and uh, you know anti paganism. So let's say, but throughout Christian symbolism, and I mean that literally throughout. Uh, once you get familiar with these older symbols, you'll find it in cathedrals. In the Bible itself, and of course in many other cultures as well, very similar themes. So that's Fortuna or Prosper, uh, connected also to Hermes, and this is a very square and the plum, or also the pendulum. Ancient engineers, again back to uh, Egypt, the other Romans, the Greeks inherited so much of their knowledge and so much of their themes and their stories from earlier civilizations. And again, we just see a, a from the oldest of the old and to up until the the modern period how these symbols and these themes just continue and they're built into well, especially into our architecture. Uh, well, wheel of fortune. So it's you know it's built into our into our entertainment. In, uh, it's it's a a phrase that's you know sticks with us. It's part of our collective conscious. And anyway, quick one. Hope you enjoyed wheel of fortune.